fact, all right, we have a decent gathering here, but if you are on the younger side and you would like to partake in our children's moment, please don't hesitate to run on up here. Or maybe not run, but kind of saunter quickly. All right. Well, I, good morning, everybody. Good morning. good morning. Okay, so this morning we're going to talk about light. But first, I want to hear a little bit from you guys. Who here has something about them that they want to share that they really like about themselves? What, what has someone said? Yes, Claire? You're flexible. Now, is, are you physically flexible or mentally flexible or both? Both. I like that answer. That's good. That's good. Okay, yes, Naomi. You're confident. All right, Naomi is confident. What else? What else do you real what have you what else do you like about yourself? Yes. Aoife has a great great artistic personality. Okay. Who else? Yes. Emma is good at art. All right. Briley? You're good at archery. All right. Anybody else? Yes. Remy? You're what? You're good. You're so, oh, Remy is good. All right. All right. Tell me this. What about, so I've heard a little bit. What have your parents told you that they love about you? Yes. Your mom told you that Jesus loves you? Your mom told you that she loves you. Well, that's good. Good job, Carrie. Okay. Yes. You give a lot of hugs, so you're kind. Okay, good. Jocelyn? Oh, Jocelyn, what, what, is your, what did your family tell you that they love about you or your parents? You're smart. Oh my goodness. Eva and then Emma? Cuz you're so sweet. All right, Eva, you're very sweet. Okay. And then who? Oh, Naomi. What All right, take Naomi. What what have they said? You're very energetic. Woof. Okay. All right. Yes. You you can laugh at yourself. That's what your dad says. Oh, that's a great quality. Emma? Your paintings are good. Okay, that's also a really good one. Anybody else? Well, so this morning, we're going to talk about all of these things. So when you have all of these things, has anyone shared some of these great aspects of who you are with people? Yeah? You never, uh, now, you never do that? Okay, well, we not, might need to work on that. But So everyone has shared some of these things. So being kind. Aoife, you said you were, you've been told you're sweet. You have something? Tell me. Clear. What do you, what do you what do you have? Well, that is very sweet, Claire. You're so you're very giving, huh? Okay. So you have shared that you're a giving person. So what we heard is that these are the kind of things that we need to share with others. Because I just heard so many amazing things about you guys. And do you want to hide that stuff from people? Or would you rather share it with the whole world? You'd rather hide Eva. Eva would rather hide it. I don't know. Donovan, Audrey, I don't know what's happening there. It depends. It depends. Okay. Well, why, why might we want to share that? Yeah? Okay, so you don't want to sound like you love yourselves. That's that's one of the cons. What's a why? Why should you share it? Yeah, Briley. They can learn more about you. Yes. Ooh, so that you can show your neighbors and everyone that Jesus is love and loves you, right? And they they are loved too, right? Remy, did you have something? No, okay. Well, so that is the lesson this morning, that we want to share these things. Like, we want to share how kind we are and how giving we are and how smart we are and all of our artistic abilities. 
Because why? Because we want to show that Jesus has given us these gifts and wants to shine that in the whole world, okay? All right. You guys are pretty amazing, and I wouldn't want all of those things because we heard about a light, right? You don't want to, if you guys are all little lights, you don't want to hide that light. You want to shine that light everywhere, okay? All right, so on the count of three, we need to tell all these people, right, that Jesus is light. And how we're going to remind him by saying on the count of three, who loves them? What do you guys think? Who loves the most? Jesus. I know you know Eva, Jesus. Jesus. Okay, are you ready? We're going to shout it out really loud, really, really loud. I want to hear your loudest voices, okay? This is who loves them the most. One, two, three. Yeah! Okay, great. Thank you, guys. You can follow Miss Laura Beth out. my goodness that was I don't that was that, I don't know if I can top that um, but I'm gonna do my best to do a little something for you guys this morning so we just got back from diocese and convention and for those of you who don't know our diocese has a group of people in the diocese of Alabama in our in our kind of gathering of all the Episcopal parishes and our area of Alabama, and we gather together once a year to talk about what's going on in our area with all of our parishes, which is like, I think it's 80-something, 80 87-something-ish parishes. So we have a lot of really good things to talk about. And it was part fun, and it was part informative, but at its core, it was a time to reflect on how we're doing in our work together as God's disciples in Alabama. And so in the light of the Old Testament reading and in the gospel, we might say it was a time to reflect on how we ourselves are a reflection of God's light, a reflection of how God is working in us as a community. So the past week and weekend, it started on Thursday and went all the way until yesterday afternoon, it was an intensive moment for us to gather and consider how we reflect God's light working in and through us. It was really, if we get down to it, it was a time for us to ask a prophetic question. And that question is, how are we reflecting God's light in our ever-evolving world? I describe this as a prophetic question because prophets are the ones who are pointing us to where God is leading. They help us discern God's message, one often of a very specific direction. And that is why I call it a prophetic question, because it's one that begs us and in our Episcopal community, both you know, from a diocesan level, but also here at St. Thomas. It's one that helps us discern direction. Where is God directing us? So it's important for us as a community, but it's also equally important to us as individuals. And in some ways, it's easier for us to really discern this in community, in a large community, at an event like convention, because we're all gathered together. We're pressured a little bit. That's part of it. We're pressured to do the work of questioning and wondering, to discern about the past, present, and future as disciples. And it's intensified, and our ability to gauge God's direction for our community is heightened just a bit. As a community, we are coming together to ask a relatively simple question. Are we doing this right? I think it's a really natural, natural question for us as individuals to ask about a, a ton of different things. Like if you're a parent, for example, you might say to yourself, am I Am I doing this parenting thing right? Or, for example, if you're a spouse, am I being a good partner? Am I doing this right? 
Maybe you're driving along the road and someone cuts you off and you might for just a split second think, am I doing this right? I know I have. I also believe it is so natural for us to ask this question as individuals, but specifically disciples. Am I doing this discipling right? And discipleship is definitely, perhaps unlike driving, because I'm pretty sure I've perfected that. (laughs) Discipleship is something we can never really perfect. So it is a fantastic question for us to continually stew over. Am I doing this right? As faithful people, is it appropriate for us as individuals to hone our own prophetic voice using this question or one like it? We might also ask ourselves, am I following where God is leading me? Am I heading in the right direction? And yet, as individuals, when we take on this question, it can also be very cumbersome. If you've ever taken it on, you're like, It opens up this Pandora's box of other questions. First and foremost, when we get to the readings this morning, it's what is light? We hear about light in the Old Testament, in the Gospel, in the Psalm. We hear about light used as a metaphor. We use it throughout our liturgical year, but it takes on a multitude of connotations. Here, this morning, the light is one of righteousness, a metaphor, a light-like righteousness that we reflect, which only comes from God. Righteousness is not a word we use often, not as lost as Latin. I'm sorry, Laurie Fowler, Latin scholar that you are. (laughs) But it's strange still, okay? It's still a little bit weird. It is one of those overtly religious words Unless you were a child of the 80s and hip enough to use the word righteous as a substitute for superb or cool or awesome, you don't really know. It doesn't carry a whole lot of understanding. So righteousness needs a little bit of explaining because it's jam-packed with meaning. My favorite explanation, though, is pretty simple, and that's why I like it. It's the characteristic of living in the world as God intends like that. This explanation is particularly helpful as it doesn't isolate righteousness as that between individuals and God alone, okay? It's not just about individuals and God. And it doesn't even limit us to human and God relationships. But it is about we and the entire world, or better yet, the cosmos, all creation, and how we engage in all creation that are relevant to living right with God. So this understanding of righteousness gives us the really necessary grounding we need to understand things like, I don't know, sanctification, which is another one of those super religious but super important words, or the kingdom of God, or eschatology, which is another one of those big words, but for end times, and of course so much of scripture, especially anything that we hear about Paul. Paul was always writing about righteousness. But most importantly, righteousness helps us in understanding that question of, am I doing this right? Am I discipling like God intends? In the Isaiah passage specifically, we hear about that righteousness. And then, of course, later on in the gospel, we hear about the light and righteousness, which has been kept and told by the law and the prophets. And remember, Specifically, in the Isaiah passage, it is coming from a prophetic voice. It's pretty, it's pretty clear when you, when you read it to yourself, if you have it in front of you, which I know you do. Remember, it is prophets that help us discern where God is calling to us in the here and now. And how God is calling us to be in our particular moment in time. And this is why it is important and prophetic for us to continually ask, am I doing this right? Because, and I think you'll see where I'm going with this, because what is right for one season is not always right for another season. What was working for us at St. Thomas in the Episcopal Diocese of Alabama in the wider church 20, 15, 10 years ago 
maybe even, dare I say, 2019, doesn't really work as well now. Things have changed. And because we live in this ever-evolving world, it is important for us to tap into our own prophetic voices and ask, am I doing this right? Or am I discipling as God wants today in this place? But thankfully, these are not questions that we have to ask in a vacuum. We are guided through Christ and aided by Christ's own fulfillment. He fulfills what he talks about in Matthew He fulfills what the law and the prophets have foretold. With Christ, those same laws and prophets in which Jesus exemplifies help us to discern this question. And it's passages like Isaiah that we heard this morning that really break some of this down for us, that give us concrete ways in which we can understand what this means to live right, to be righteous. Sometimes I think they even work better than the things that we hear Jesus talking about in the parables, even though those are fantastic and wonderful, and Jesus is great, obviously. I'm a big fan. (laughs) But there's something to be said for the Old Testament that continue to speak to how we live in broken, sinful systems in which we continue to be a part of. The prophet writer of Isaiah calls to Israel... And, you know, to us too. Calling to them about what is truly the direction of God. Challenging them about God's direction. Of course, out of love. Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day. Rightness with God is harder to come by when you are looking to make a go, an easy go of it. But if instead you loose the bonds of injustice, Undo the thongs of the yoke. Let the oppressed go free. Break every yoke. Share your bread with the hungry. Bring the homeless poor to your house. And when you see the naked, to cover them. Then, then this light, this righteousness, this light like righteousness shall break forth like the dawn. And the light shall rise in every darkness. This prophet's voice helps aid us in our own prophetic questioning. Am I doing this right? Now, this is not easy work. It's not work for the faint of heart. It's hard work. But I know that St. Thomas is not a place afraid of hard work. It takes courage to ask this question, both as individuals and as a community. The keynote speaker, the Reverend Dr. Jason Biasi, who was at convention this year, a native North Carolinian and Methodist, which is a little bit, you know, strange to those of us who are Episcopalians, who's now serving in Canada, Canada, he has seen and done quite a bit. And he gave us a ton to chew on when it comes to being that prophetic voice in our communities, in our parish communities, One story I want to share with you all, because it reminded me just a little bit of our parish. It was about a a parish that was comfortable. You know, like, perhaps membership was dwindling just a bit, but generally comfortable. And it had these doors on it, meant to probably, like, keep the Vikings out. I'm sure you can imagine, like, what those doors look like. If you've ever been to downtown Huntsville and you've seen the Episcopal Church down there, the Church of the Nativity, it was, like, those doors times 100. So, and they were, as you might expect, closed and locked. So one of his friends, the pastor, one of the, pa- the friends of this pastor, he said, just open the doors because... Space was at a premium in the city where this church was located. So the idea fit. Just open the doors. Open the doors for town hall meetings. Open the doors for immigrants to come and learn English as a second language and eat a hot meal together. Open the doors for a bat mitzvah. Just open the doors. Another thing that the Reverend Jason Biasi said, and this is a paraphrase, 
And remember, you know, he's a Methodist, so he's a little bit, you know, different than we are. Is he said, if you are crazy enough about Jesus to take him to the people others won't, you'll grow. And that sounds like a win-win to me. Because we sit around here in this space in which we have grown comfortable, and I cannot tell you that we, how much we yearn for growth. We yearn to see younger people. We yearn to see them taking over some of our committees and being involved in new and different ways. We yearn for that, and rightly so, y'all. We are a group of righteous individuals, and we sit down here on Bailey Cove, and we are already so invested in the community. We're already a light, but let's be a crazy light. Let's be an exploding light for Jesus. Let's be a light that can't be hid just down here, but continue to just, like I said, explode. Because the year is still young. 2023 is still young. So bring your ideas to our outreach committee. We're meeting here in the church tomorrow at 6 p.m. And come be foolish with us. We are trying to love on our young adults and families with children and build a stronger future for our parish. So come and have some foolish fun with us this month. This month is Black History Month, and there is a workshop on February 25th to continue the conversation on racial healing in Madison, which is just up the road that our diocese is putting in. And we have already done some really good hard work about overcoming those racial divides and working on healing. But we need to take that one step further. So come. It could be a jumping off point as we work towards dismantling race, racism in Huntsville and all overs and we're better understanding our black brothers and sisters. So come be foolish with us. I encourage you, 2023 is still young. Don't be afraid. Come be desperately foolish for Jesus.